What up, you two? It's your boy, Detroit Love, with another video. So in the previous video, I showed you how to get the volume working with the stock toggle switch, where you can go from off, low, and high. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with the, the slider. This is a modified Marvel superhero cabinet. We have our volume working. And of course, we have our switch. We showed you how to do that, power everything off. And I do mean everything. All right, guys, check it out. So today we're going to talk about um, how do we get the Generation 3 cabinets of the RK 1UP 3 quarter scale um, RK cabinets to utilize the volume switch. This is the new volume switch where it's not a click, it's not a toggle switch. It's a step, so you press it and it'll uh, change the volume. Uh, so I looked around the web and couldn't seem to find anybody that had made a video. I did find a gentleman by the name of, his name is Hervarius, I don't know if I'm saying it right, U R V A I U S. He made this uh, file called the RK One Up Power and Volume. Uh, I, I didn't really look at the where the power came from, but uh, he had the script for the volume that allow you to utilize it. He had an issue with his programming because what it would do is as you increase the volume it would eventually air out. You wouldn't know that it aired out. The volume would just stop at the maximum vo uh, volume and you couldn't change it from then because the the app would have, have, or the script would have crashed in the background. And so if you went down too low, uh, be lower than zero or higher than 100, the script would uh, uh, air out. Uh, because he had it stepping by five you know, degrees of volume, either up or down. Um, so I had to change the code so that it would stop. Because he said if it's less than zero or, or greater than, or less than 100 or greater than zero, whatever it was, you look at the script there. Uh, there was a flaw in it because it was allowing it to step five uh, volume steps higher than 100 and it would crash or uh, subtract, uh, five from zero and it would crash. So I changed it so that the the ceiling was ninety five and and the and the floor was five. Uh, that way you could step down from five to zero or step up from ninety five to a hundred and you couldn't go beyond it. Uh, so I made this the code available on, on my Dropbox where I always put all my files at. All right. So I put the instructions as well as the actual uh, Python script. All right, so the scripts, the, the link is in the description. All right, so there's two files here. The Pi Step Volume Control Instructions for RK1UP and the Pi Step Volume.py. So you download those two. So we'll click on that one. Huh. This computer's janky. 
here. Okay. Click here. Download. It'll save that. It's telling me this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to do it? Um, anyway, uh, so I keep. Now I'm on a Mac. Um, so you'll get a similar thing from on the PC. <coughs> so I'm going to show you how to do this on the Mac. And, and we can get FileZilla when uh, you can get different programs to copy over to the um, Pi. But I like to teach you some new things. So we're going to do it without having to uh, use a graphical interface program, a GUI program to a GUI program to do it. We're going to do it all from the either the command, command prompt or the terminal. So to get a terminal screen on Windows, you just hit this little search thing up at the top corner. Can't really see it there. But you just hit the search thing and start typing terminal. It'll bring the list up. There it is. So the utilities, we can just launch that. Okay. All right. So this is similar to a DOS prompt on a, a Windows PC. So it just as well. All right. So we have this file. Can't even see it. All right. And we need to get that over to the Pi. So we'll pull up our instructions. And we'll just put this over here so you can see. All right. So it's going through a few different things, just telling you information. Um, the prerequisites, if you're on the PC, you want to um, download PuTTY. And so I have the link in the instructions as well. All right. So this is just saying I'm giving credit to your virus. Uh, he had a bug in the thing. I corrected the code and put it here. Okay. And the instructions that you're that I'm actually re opening and reading right now is found here. All right. So this is uh, installation for one of the newer cabs that have the, the step volume control. All right. Note that the volume cannot be changed during the uh, boot up. So if you have a splash screen, a video that plays when you boot up the um, the RK one up modded RK one up cabinet, you cannot alter the the volume with that. All right. So again, prerequisite for Windows, you need to install Putty. For the Mac, everything's already installed. So installation of the hardware. So we're going to we're saying here that you need to retain your volume three wire connector. Okay? And you need to plug that into GPIO pins. Uh let me just bring this over here. GPIO Pins 35, 37, and 39. <coughs> That's basically the last three. The last three pins on the left side. So if you're looking at your pie, you have two sets, two rows, two rows of pins, right? The right side and left side. So the pins that we need to pin are these last three. And you want the red wire to plug in the last one. Okay. All right. So this cabinet's not done yet, so I'm have all kinds of junk in the way but you can see there uh, you can ignore that go post on to the right, left of it because that's just a mounting uh, tool but you see the red white and blue the red is on the last pin so in this position it's the top row all right you see that and so it's just plugged into the last row of that pie 
On this position is the top row. So that's all you gotta do. All right, so now that that plug is plugged in, we can go and start our installation of the code. Why does this thing keep? All right, so we already downloaded the file. We already opened up terminal. And so now we're on the Mac, so we're gonna do this command. If you're on the Windows on the, with a command prompt, you would do this. So you first you wanna change directories to the directory that has the file. So in this case, we can do ls or on Windows be di, dir for directory. And I download it into downloads, so I'm just going to change directory into downloads. List my directory again, just to make sure that it is there and we see it there at the bottom. And so now we're just going to copy and paste this command here. Well, now the the other the, I guess the other prerequisite is you need to know what your pi address is. So back over here on your pi, if you back up to the main menu, hit your player one button, it'll bring this up. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it is there somewhere, but you know, you want to scroll down to options. RetroPie options. <coughs> when you get to this menu, go up to go down to the bottom. That just saves you some scrolling. And you see it says Wi-Fi. Uh, there's actually a show IP that's above there. See that? Keep going up. Show IP. Hit enter or hit the A button. <coughs> and it tells me now, I see people hiding this IP address here. This IP address is irrelevant. This is the local IP address uh, that is not communicated. We all have a 192. something. So this is irrelevant to um, anybody outside of this network. Uh, so you got to know what your IP address is. All right? So once you have that... <coughs> We can come over here and we want to type this command here. SCP space minus RP space. We're just saying the present working directory, this pi step volume dot PI space PI, that's the user, at the IP address and colon slash home slash pi. We're going to copy that. And then we go over to our terminal and paste that in. All right, hit enter. And after a few seconds, oh, you it see it's asking for the password. That's Raspberry. And now you'll see a little message like here saying that it, it shows the size and the speed of the transfer. So it's done. All right. So what's our next step here? It says log into the Raspberry Pi. So here we're just going to say SSH. SSH Pi at the IP address. Ask for the password again. That's Raspberry. All right. And so now we're in the Pi. And we can do LS again. They'll just...
All right. And so now we're in the pie and we can do LS again. They'll just show us what's here. So we see our file is here. Okay. And we have a scripts directory because the scripts directory is used for another script for the power. So the next step says make the directory. So if you don't have the directory, you have to make it. And then you're going to, uh, it says you can change directories. We don't want to do that. So let's just delete that. All right, we want to make it. And now we want to install the Python. Now, mine's already installed, so I'm going to get some type of error. But you just copy and paste this command. And see, I already have this version, so it's done. But if you you wouldn't have it, you would have it. you would install it. This was the audio Python LS audio. All right. So once you do that, then we're going to move our file to the scripts directory. So we're just going to copy that, paste it there, hit enter. All right. So it moved, and the next step says run the script and test. So first we've got to make the script executable. So we're going to copy this. Paste that there. Hit enter. It made it uh, executable. Then we want to run that command just to this is just testing it <coughs> excuse me so we'll copy that and paste it so hit enter oh, so we have to do a sudo so I need to change my command here sudo space Python all right, let's copy that. I'm just going to say clear just so we get rid of all that gibbity gobbity. All right, so we're going to paste that. We're just testing it. So sudo Python and the path of the file. So it's showing me that my um, volume is currently at 69. So I'm just going to launch something over here just so we can hear something. Okay. All right, so you hear me putting coins in. And I'm just going to move the, I'll just swing over so you can see. I'm just going to do the toggle. Let me start the game so you have some noise. Okay, start. Okay. So here they get louder. Go back the other way. I can, I can uh, tap it. Uh, I can't see it. I can tap it or I can just push and hold. And I'll just keep doing, I'll do the same thing over here so you can see. So you can see as I'm doing that, cause, because we're testing it, it's doing it. So I'm going to go up. See, see there? See how it won't go past 100 now. I can go all the way down. But it won't go down past, because it, it has to add 5. Because it's at 4, 4, if you add if you subtract five, it will be negative one, so it won't let you go any f lower than four. And likewise, as you go up, is that 99? So it will not allow it to go over. The original script that the, the guy made, uh, he had a zero and a hundred, so it would step below it and above it, and so you had an error. Um, <coughs> all right, so now that we know that it works, we can do a follow our instructions it says you should see what volume you're currently at and move the volume slider left and right 
and you would uh, see that new volume. Do a control C to exit. So control C and we exit. All right. So now that we know that it'll work, but it'll only work during this session because if we reboot, we're not telling it to start up at all. So we want to go to the next step here. And we want to add the script to run every time. Every time it boots with cron tabs. Now with the other scripts, we uh, edit it and we edit the RC local file. Here we're going to use a cron tab. Cron tab is just a, chron a chronological table that will run things at a certain time, but we're going to do it so it does it at the boot. So we're going to do a sudo cron tab space minus E. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to copy this command here. Goodness, this mouse. All right, copy. Paste it over there. And so now it brings up this file. Now, if you... When you run, this is probably going to tell you that this file doesn't exist, and you'll have to hit whatever key to say, yes, create it. All right, so we're just going to scroll down to the bottom with our arrows and get to an empty spot. All right, and then we're just going to paste this command here or type it. And paste that in there. So it's saying, at boot, run this script. Okay, so we're going to save it. Control X. Yes, enter. Now it says installing new cron tab. So we're done. Now we just want to reboot. And do I have the command here? No, I need to add that. So here we'll say a sudo reboot. No, no caps. And sudo, not sudo. Sudo. Reboot. Alright, so we're going to copy that. Now, before I do this, I'm going to turn this volume down because it's going to be super loud if we head it up high. I can't remember where it was. No, we're at we're at 44%, so it won't be too bad. So we're going to do a pseudo reboot. Machine is rebooting. Can't control the volume here at all. So I need to shorten that video with just a smidgen. That's a custom video, just because this is Marvel's cap. All right, so we boot up into the RK One Up theme, <coughs> and so now the volume should work. Let's just pick a game. I don't know what, know what this is. Probably gonna be something that takes forever to boot up. Okay, volume's really low. Can't really hear that. I'll just use the thing here. Bring it up some. Alright, get that volume right. Hit start. And there you go. You see it's working? Just hold it to the right. Hold it to the left. Now, the only thing that it doesn't do... It doesn't do like the RK one up uh, cabinet, the stock cabinet where it shows you on the screen the volume. It doesn't do that, so you just have to hear it. So you don't know it's at 50% or 25% or whatever. Okay? Uh, and there, there you have it. Um, 
So I do have the commands. The only thing different with the command with the Windows PC is just you would be using the command prompt, uh, and the command would be slightly different, and that's in the text file as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it. This cabinet's uh, I'm still waiting on some parts to come in. Uh, had a problem with one of the green buttons. I want to keep the buttons the same color as the original, would just be LED, but. That green, one of the green buttons wasn't working, so I'll have to play around with that and see if I can get that fixed. Otherwise, I'll just swap it out and put yellow instead of green. The kid's not going to care either way, but um, this is a very beautiful cabinet. Oh, so, so now my question is, do I mount the speaker up on the top like I normally do, where you have volume control there? In addition to using that button, or do I just take out these stock speakers and mount that speaker bar up inside the cabinet? So right now, that's just that speaker bar down there. Do I mount it out of sight and keep it looking stock, keep it looking clean up here? Uh, well, it's not clean up here because it's dusty. But you understand what I'm saying? Do I do I mount the speaker like I normally do, or do I put it inside where you don't have access to it? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Which which way would you do it? All right, guys, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. If this if you found this video informational or informative, uh. Please like. If you haven't subscribed, you can help us out for free just by subscribing. That gets us up in the rankings. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. As always, guys, until next time, I'll see you on the web.